Good day, everyone. You are especially welcome to today's episode of Dr. Ifu's Hematology and Blood Transfusion Science Lecture Series. Today's lecture is going to be on ABO blood receptor. At the end of this class, you should be able to describe different blood groups different blood groups that can be found in ABO blood receptor. You should also be able to mention the antigens that are in ABO blood receptor. You should be able to describe the antibodies that are in ABO blood receptor. And you should also be able to understand and explain the clinical importance of ABO blood receptor. What is a blood group system? A blood group is an inherited character of the red blood cell surface that can be detected by a specific allo antibody. And this character must be able to stimulate the production of this allo antibody. A blood group system is also a group of antigens that are encoded by allele at a single gene locus or at gene loci that are closely linked together, that are crossing over, does not occur, or even when it does, is very, very limited. Human red cells, human red blood cells, contain numerous surface structures that can be recognized as antigens by the immune system of individuals who lack that particular structure. There are so many things on the surface of red blood cells that are antigenic in nature. Human blood possesses different antigenic and immune processes that can be recognized. They can, these immunogenic substances have the capacity to trigger immune response when they are introduced into a system that does not contain that particular antigen. And this is actually the characteristics of different blood group system, especially the ABO blood group system. There are more than 20 genetically determined blood group systems known today. There are so many of them we have about 40 or more. We have systems like ABO, the one we are discussing today, RH, some people call it RESUS, MNSS, blood group system, P blood group system, Lutra, Kel, Leis, Diego. Kid, Duffy, and etc. etc. Of all these different blood group systems that I have mentioned to you, ABO and RS system are the most important. They are the most clinically important red cell antigen. ABO is more, more immunogenic than most of them. The history of ABO blood group system. ABO blood group system was discovered by a scientist called Carl Lansteno in 1901. While he was working with his fellow scientists, experimenting with their blood and steroids. they were able to perform the very first known forward and reverse grouping. 
And this earned them a Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine in 1940. Van Sola was able to describe A, B, and O. And this was followed by Alfred von der Kostilos and his group that discovered a sub, another subgroup, AB, in 1902. And then, subsequently, we have A1, subgroups like A1, A2, A1B, A2B, being discovered by Ludwig Hesfeld and his co-scientists. Lansana proposed a rule that actually helps us to understand the ABO block bit system better. And this is just a simple rule that if you're able to understand it, it will help you to know that what is going on in the ABO block bit system. And the rule says that if an antigen, if an antigen is present on a patient's blood cells, the corresponding antibody will not be present in the patient's plasma under normal condition. If an antigen is present on the surface of a patient's red blood cells, that particular, and that, there should be a, a lack of corresponding antibodies in the patient's plasma under normal condition. You can also put it in a different way. And it says that if an agglutinogen is present on the red blood cell membrane, the corresponding agglutinin will not be present in the plasma of the same individual under normal condition. Hmm. And if an antigen is absent on the red cell membrane of a particular patient, then the corresponding antibody can be found in the patient's plasma under normal condition. This is just the same thing that I'm trying to explain in different ways. Simply put, the Lysana rule that governs ABO blood group system simply says that if an antigen is present on the surface of red blood cell of a particular patient, then the plasma of that patient should lack the corresponding antibody. According to ABO blood group system, we have different types of uh, different blood types. Simply put, we have A, B, AB, and O. So when you are talking about different types of blood group that exist within the ABO blood group system. We have basically four. The A blood group, the B, the AB, and the O. Now what happens an individual that's a, individual that's a blood group A? If you belong to this blood group, a, you have what we call A antigens on the surface of red blood cells. Going by Lansana rule, when you have the A antigens on the surface of red blood cells, obviously you will lack A antibody in the plasma. But you are going to have another antibody, which is B in the plasma. So the individual who are blood group A has A antigens on the surface of the red cells and B antibody in the plasma. Individuals who are blood group B, they have B antigens on the surface of the red cells and antibody A in the plasma. Then individuals who are AB, blood group AB, under ABO blood group system, they have both A and B antigen on the surface of the red blood cell. And going by Lansana rule, their plasma should contain no antibody. 
Therefore, they have a antigen on the surface of the red cells, and in their plasma, they don't have either A or B antibody. The individuals who are O blood group, they have they don't have any antigen with regards to ABO blood group system on the surface of the red blood. That is either A or B antigen. They don't have it. But in their plasma, they have both anti A and anti B in their plasma. Putting this in a tabular form, we have basically four different blood groups in ABO blood group system, like I said earlier, the blood group A, the blood group B, the blood group AB, and then the blood group O. o. Then the A and B antigen distribution, both on the surface of red blood cell and then within the whole system. How is that? The studies have shown that there are approximately 800,000 to 1.2 million A antigen sites on the surface of red blood cells. And while you have about 650 to 800,000 to 850,000 B antigen sites on the surface of the red blood cells. Studies have also shown that A and B antigens are widely distributed in the body on the membranes of a range of cells. They are ubiquitously distributed within the system. They can be found on the surface of the red cells, obviously. They can also be found on the surface of white blood cells, platelets, epithelial cells, endothelial cells, stomatozoa, gastric mucosa cells, and also they can also be found in flints and people that are secretors. Okay? Frequency. In Caucasians, you have about 43% of Caucasians having A antigen, white to 7% of blacks having A antigen and 28 Asians. Why the B antigen can be found in about 9% of Caucasians, 20% Black, and 27% Asians. In Nigeria, we have group O individuals being more, have about 53% of our population being group A. Why group A? We have about 22% of the population being group A. Group B have 22% and group A we have about 3%. ABO inheritance and genetics. This ABO, antigens of ABO blood group system, how are they inherited? First of all, it is good for us to note that ABO gene is autosomal in nature. That is, the, the genes, the gene is not on either the Sex chromosome, it cannot be found on the sex chromosomes. And ABO gene locus is located on chromosome 9. And A and B, the A antigens and B antigen are dominant and they are co dominant. What it means is that when both antigens are present, both of them are ex ex expressed, like an individuals who are AB. Both A and B antigens are. Express, they are co-dominant. And it's good for us to know that inheritance of A and B antigens are, they are inherited in Mendelian manner. In 1924, Breston established that ABO blood group system is inherited in a Mendelian fashion. It has been established that, without exception, any blood group carried by a child must be found in the parent. It has been established that any blood group, especially 
with regards to ABO blood group system that we are discussing today. Any blood, blood group found in a child must be found in the parent. For example, if a father is A, the phenotype of a father is A, and the genotype is AA or AO. And the phenotype of a mother is O, with the genotype being OO. Now, for, what are the possible phenotypes of the of, of, uh, genotype of the offspring? The possible phenotype or genotype of the offspring is the child can either be AA, AO, or OO. If you are able to calculate do that, calculate that in a Mendelian manner, you should be able to arrive at that. ABO antigens are present on red blood cells and in other tissues like saliva, gland, pancreas, and kidney, except the central nervous system. That has been said earlier. And also, those who are secretors can secrete ABO substance in their fluids, body fluids like saliva and other fluids. ABU antigens are detectable in the fetal life long before birth at about six weeks of fetal age. They are fully developed at birth, unlike antibodies, but they are weakly reactive. The antigens of ABO blood group system are fully developed at birth. What it means is that you can actually perform antigen detection with regards to ABO blood group system once a child is born and they can determine what the, the blood group of that child with regards to ABO blood group system. But it can only do forward grouping. It cannot do reverse grouping. I'm going to explain that in a while. Okay? But the reaction of these cells at birth cannot be compared to that of an adult because at birth they are weakly reacting. After birth, there is gradual increase in the agglutinability of the A or B antigens until about age of three, when it attains the adult stage. H antigen is also present usually in all individuals. I'm going to explain H antigen and its relationship with ABO blood group system. We are going to mention it in, uh, briefly as we are describing the ABO blood group system because we cannot you know, uh, confidently and we cannot talk about ABO blood group system without mentioning H antigen. But I'm going to have another full lecture on H blood group later. But for now, we are discussing ABO blood group system. And in ABO blood group system, H antigen is found in all groups of ABO blood group system but in varying degrees, in varying degrees. The antibodies in ABO blood group system, the antibodies in ABO blood group system are very unique in nature. They are unique because they are what we call natural occurring antibodies. They are natural occurring antibodies. Some group of school of thought said that they are produced as a result of exposure to A-like or B-like antigenic structures or stimuli that are found within the environment once a baby is born. They are not stimulated by any form of antigenic antigen. That is, there is no antigenic stimulation. Prior, no reports antigenic stimulation prior to development of anti-A and anti-B. Anti but the school of thought said, but some school of thought said that they are produced by exposure. Once a child is born and is exposed to A-like and B-like substances that are present within the environment. Children less than stream ones usually have little or no antibody production. 
The first being produced at about three to six months. Unlike the antigens, which are fully developed, even though we feel the acting at birth, the antibodies are not produced at birth. So a child is born with the antigens with regard to embryo block the system, but the antibodies are not there. The antibody production starts coming out from about three to six months of birth. And the baby is born mostly with the mother's antibody within the system. And that is why most times it's not advisable. You are not supposed to do a reverse grouping for a baby that is still below three months. Because what you actually, the antibody you actually isolating in the baby's cell is actually the mother's antibody, not the baby's uh, antibody. Okay? Almost all normal healthy individuals above three to six months of age have natural occurring antibody to the ABO antigen that they react. But from that three to six months of age, they start developing and they start, the, the titer and the concentration start increasing until it peaks at about five to ten years of age. Until it peaks at about five to ten years of age. And it's also the, the agglutinating power of this antibody also declines with age. Now, the natural occurring antibody, these natural occurring antibodies are mostly IgM in nature. They are mostly IgM in nature. They are cold antibodies. That means they can react very well at room temperature. They can also react at 37 degrees Celsius. They can react very well at room temperature. They are mostly IgM in nature. And they can react also at 37 degrees Celsius. You can also have a little of IgG antibodies. You can also find it in ABO, among the ABO global system. But mostly, mostly predominantly, can I predominantly found it in group O individuals. IgG, immune form of antibody can also be found, and IgG in nature can also be found among the group O individuals. ABO, the antigens in ABO blood group system. What are they? These antigens are actually sugars or carbohydrates attached to red blood cell. They are actually sugars, carbohydrates attached to red blood cell. They are antigens that are built on the surface of the red blood cell. And individuals inherit gene that goes for specific sugars to be added to the red cells. The type of sugar that is added determines the blood group. Genes are three separate locus, loci control the occurrence and location of ABO antigens. The presence or absence of ABH gene is controlled by the ABH and ABO genes. And the presence or absence of ABH gene on the red blood cell membrane is controlled by the H genes. And the presence or absence of ABH antigen in secretion is controlled by what we call SE gene. What we call the SE gene. Now, now what we call H antigen, which I mentioned earlier, and I said we are going to have a full lecture on that. But you cannot discuss successful ABO blood group system without mentioning H antigen. Because H antigen is actually the building block upon which the A or B substance is built. The H gene calls for an enzyme that adds the sugar glucose to a terminal sugar of the precursor substance. The enzyme is called glucosyl transferase. The precursor substance proteins or lipid is a form of oligosaccharide chain which we call the basic structure or 
precursor substance. Fructose transferrin must add a fructose at the end of the number two carbon of the terminal galactose. This provides what we call state specificity, as well as the substance for the A and substrate for the A and B antigen. The A and B antigens are determined by two terminal sugars. By the time the H antigen is formed, the addition of another sugar, either galactose or N acetyl galactosamine, will determine whether an individual will be blood group A or Blood group B. What am I trying to say? What I'm trying to say is we have specific genes that actually code for the production of specific enzymes that add a particular sugar to already form precursor substance on the surface of the red blood cell. This already formed precursor substance and oligosaccharide chain form as a building block. A basic structure for the formation of what we call H antigen, which is a substrate for A and B antigen. Now, the enzyme is what we call fructose transferase. When an individual is able to produce this enzyme, he now adds, is able to produce this enzyme, he can now add sugar called fructose. So the terminal end of that precursor substance, the terminal sugar at the end of that precursor substance is galactose. And fructose transferase add another sugar which we call fructose to it. Once this fructose is added to the precursor substance, the whole precursor substance is now transformed and changed. It becomes what we call H antigen. Now, if that individual also is able to produce another enzyme, I will call galactose transferase. When this is done, the person, the individual is able to add another sugar called galactose to the already formed H antigen. The galactose is added to the last galactose on the precursor substance that is also carrying the fructose that gives the name the substance H antigen. Once the galactose is added, in addition to fructose that's already been added, the individual becomes blood group B. But if an individual is able to form n acetyl galactosamine transferase, another enzyme, and is able to produce this enzyme, and this enzyme adds another sugar that is called n acetyl galactosamine to the last galactose on the precursor substance. In addition to the fructose that's already been added, the individual becomes blood group A. And if they pass, another individual is able to produce both enzymes, both galactosyl transferase and acetyl galactosamine transferase, then the individual will should be able to add both A and B substance to galactose. In addition to fructose that's already been formed earlier, and the individual will become what? A, B, blood group. This is basically how the A and B antigen are formed on the surface of the red blood cell. There's also another scenario where an individual is not able to produce either fructose transferase or galactose transferase or n acetyl uh, galactosamine transferase. 
when an individual is not able to produce it, something else also happens. And we have another case where the person becomes what we call Bombay blood group. But if an individual is able to produce glucosyl transferase and is not able to produce galactosamyl transferase and n acetyl galactosyl transferase and n acetyl galactosamyl transferase, the individual becomes blood group O. Now, what it means is that for you to produce either A or B antigen, you must first of all have the capacity to produce H antigen. That is paramount in the production of either A or B antigen. And for you to do that, you must be able to produce the enzymes that cause for this cell, that the enzymes that catalyze this cell reaction, either galactosyl transferase or n acetyl galactosamine transferase. Okay? Now it means, what it means is that H antigen can be found in all blood groups in ABO blood group system. Occurring mostly have more of it in O individual, followed by A2 individual, B individual, A to B, A1 and A1B individual. That is a sequence of occurrence. So H antigen is predominantly found in group O individual. And it is obvious because individuals who are group O are able to produce glucose steel transferase that calls for the addition of the terminal sugar glucose to the already formed precursor substance, but they are not able to produce the other two enzymes, either the lactose transferase or n acetyl galactose transferase. So they're able to form H antigen, but they're not able to form the A or B antigen. So the surface of the red cells is actually contain H antigen. Meanwhile, why in the plasma they are having anti A and anti B in their plasma? Now, what is the clinical significance of ABO antibodies? Why are ABO antibodies so important? The ABO antibodies are actually very important in ensuring safe blood transfusion. This is because, like we said when we are discussing, we are looking at antibodies of ABO blood group system. We say they are natural occurring, and it's already there, waiting. And they have high titer. They have high agglutinatable properties. They can actually agglutinate red cell readily. They can react optimally at room temperature and also at 37 degrees. Therefore, it, is, it must be considered for you to have safe blood transfusion. And also, it is also clinically important in pregnancy. When we are looking at hemolytic disease of the fetus and the newborn, it is important because actually ABO antibodies is that are IgG in nature, they have the capacity to cross the placenta and they can actually you know, harm the baby. But the HGN or HDFN that are caused by Antibodies in ABO blood groups are mostly mild in nature. Why? One, one of the reasons why they are mostly mild in nature is one, most majority of, of antibodies in ABO blood group system are mostly IgM in nature. So it's only few that are of IgG type or immune antibody. And like I said earlier, you can be found mostly in mothers who are old, of old blood group. And maybe if they are carrying babies of who are either A or B. If they are having anti A or anti B that are of IgG in nature, there's a tendency that can, this antibody can cause the placenta and attack the baby. But because the, the antigen in of ABO blood group system are uh, widely distributed in the system. They can also be found along the placental 
body. So what it means is that as these antibodies call the placenta and navigate through the placenta to get to the baby in the womb, they are somehow, their concentration and their regulatory properties are somehow neutralized and controlled. So by the time they get to the baby, they end up causing mild uh, reaction that can be treated, but may not be fatal like other HDM caused by other antibodies or other blood pressure system like ARH. Antibodies in ABO blood pressure systems are also very important in organ transplants because like we said earlier, these antigens are present in body tissues, can be found on the surface of almost every cells and also organs and then body fluids. Therefore, it can be considered before an organ transplant can be carried out. So the ABO antigen can be said to be a major transplant uh, antigen and should be taken into consideration when you are doing compatibility testing for organ transplant. I don't know if you have any comment or questions regarding this lecture that we have today. You are free to post your comment or say something that will help 